We have a lovely old acoustic in today, but also a lovely lady I met only recently, she bought this in and a lovely sounding guitar as well. So why is it in? Well, she says the low E keeps buzzing. Now, I cannot make it buzz at all. But she is adamant it keeps buzzing. She says she took it to a man before and he charged her £65 or something and it was still buzzing. Now, I don't really think it is. So I've told her that I will strip it, clean it, check the frets replace the nut for £80 plus a set of strings if she wants me to do it. She says, yes I do. I'm still convinced it needs doing. Anyway, let's talk about the guitar. It is an old Tanglewood, likely made in Korea, but all it says on them is, it says United Kingdom on the back and designed in the United Kingdom, which I knew even the early ones were designed in the UK now. They were made in Korea for quite a length of time. I've had some really, really good Tanglewoods over the years. We used to do a Tanglewood, was it Tanglewood Earth series? They were that good, I think we were made at a court factory in Korea. And Tanglewood stopped doing that series and Court carried the series on themselves because the guitars were that good. So this may be earlier than those, I'm not sure. I'd say it's a low to medium range guitar. Sounds nice, but I'm going to do exactly what the lady wants me to do. And um, yeah, I'm going to take the strings off, I'm going to clean it up, I'm going to have a look at that nut. I might put a bow nut on there. Now the lady does have arthritis and she says it's getting progressively worse. So maybe it's the way she's hitting the strings. I says that is not, that doesn't sound like a buzz to me. It sounds like rattle, which is a little bit different. And it's to do with the way you hit the strings. Because I can't get it to buzz anyway. But I'm going to do what she's asked. She's agreed to the price. And she says just, uh, you know, do what you can and uh, if she comes back and she's it's still buzzing I'll convince her it's not buzzing I say it's just the way I don't know so I'm going to strip it get strings off strip it clean it's really dusty and dirty look at it and now I'm going to clean this all up I'm going to take the strings off we have a look at this nut because that will be some composite nut there I may put a bone nut on it for a hand carved uh, just to make the difference but I may be able to recarve that nut and get it you know, all uh, tickety-boo. So it's going to need a good clean. These bits don't come off. This rosette here and this thing. I don't like to see things like that, me. And the head stops a little bit. You know, it needs a good clean, don't it? I think I might don the gloves. So I'm going to put the gloves on for this one. But that's it. So um, what is, I'll get the strings off. I'll give it a bit of a clean. And we'll come back. We'll have a look at the state of the neck and the state of the frets and see what we think. And uh, that's about all I can tell you for right now, so stay tuned and I'll be back in a bit. So we're not going to fanny about these horrible, horrible, grungy, dirty, slimy strings. I'm going to don the gloves. Just grab some gloves out of here. Because there's no point in me uh, getting all grimed up with all the people's dead skin and sweat and horribleness you know this sometimes we draw lines at what we're accepting and uh, this is uh, it's on the cusp of what we'd allow I think but it's not funny about it we're just going to get these strings off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them from this end Give it a good clean. And what we'll do with these is we'll just wrap these up. I'm straight in the bin. Whew, horrible. So that's those ones off. 
go in the bin there. I don't have my uh, pin pause handy at the moment, but it should work. That's good. Brass pins. Do they make a difference to tone? Some people would swear that we did, others would say no, but you know, not going to hurt anything, is it? I'm quite happy with the action on this. Then we could try and get it a little bit lower, but that's something we can do a little bit later on when I've got the new strings on. I'll be sticking a set of my favourite guitar strings which are DR Dragon Skin Acoustic Strings, Ultra Light or Extra Light Gauge, 10 to 48. The lady says she would like lighter strings, but it's a bit difficult to play. Now those strings are... I have to keep it blind now because of the sunlight coming in. But I've got a couple of sets here. And they're getting really, really difficult to get hold of now, these strings. I used to get two sets, a pack of two, for about 14 quid. It's now costing me 12 quid for one set. So that's the strings we're going to go with. I to order some more of those soon. Now the nut, I'm quite happy with that nut. I'm thinking I may just recarve that nut, you know, uh, because there's nothing wrong with it. It's a bit grimy, but I'm thinking I can recut that nut. Just stick that there. Just, I'm just going to grab a file. I can't grab a file. The camera's in the way. I if I can just grab it. Right, bear with me guys, I'm just having to move that a little bit. Very unprofessional. What have I done with that thing? No, don't say it's out. I don't know, I've done, I've moved all my files, haven't I? I'm not thinking straight. All my files are down here, look, in this drawer now. It's a lot easier. That's why I don't have to... That's why this toolbox is here and the camera's where it is. I don't have to move it anymore. Oh well. Right, okay, so let's look at this one. We've got a safe edge there. So I'm just going to file this far side of this knot and just see where we are, see if I think it's clean enough and good enough to recut. Well, it's mucky. This is out of ding, it's been dropped. This has been dropped on there, this is. You can see there's an indentation just here, right in the middle. It's been dropped or not. We can still reshape the snorts, plenty on there. Now someone's put pencil lead in there. You don't need to do that with these knots, they're self-lubricating. It's a self-lubing knot. See, when I file that all over, that's going to really clean up pretty nice. So, I don't think we need to change that knot. I think we'll just recut the slots and polish it up a bit. What's this thing she's got on here? Because that's just getting in the way. I mean, come on. And yeah, that's only my breath. I'd almost stop swearing. So there you go. So uh, I'm going to clean it with oil. Got to clean it all up. Let's just check the level of a neck wire here. Scale length, I imagine it's a finger type scale length. I imagine correctly, so I'm back bow in that. Oh, not much behind. There's a bit though. Four mil down there. I'm not going to get that in, I'll tell you that. I might get this in. Four mil. Doesn't seem like it could be a five. Certainly not a five. So I trust what they've got in there then. It's going off. Ah ha ha, it is a four. Just going to take it in right. Come on, you should be able to go in there. Should get you in right about there. Nope. We didn't have it in, you saw me do it. There you go. So the truss rod's working, which is good. Don't want to buy it. Here you go, that's in. 
Crikey me, it'd have been easy to get a four mil Allen wrench out, a proper one. So let's have a look. Mmm, I wonder if his neck is a little bit bent. Because it definitely, some back bow in that. It's dropping down at this end. That, that, that in itself is not a terrible thing because it will give us some fall off or some fall away down there. Let me grab a, see if I can grab my Allen keys out of here. No, I've got to move a camera. It'll be a lot easier to do this. Sorry about that guys. Like I say, these are not professional videos. These are more for the client. Right, let's see what we can do here. Okay, that's a truss rod, break loose. Tiny, tiny bit of relief in there, so I've missed some fall away down there. So what I can do is I can just set this just to nip. So that's just nipping there. I'm just going to give it that and that's it. It's a tiny, tiny bit of tension on the truss rod. And what we're going to do is going to look at the frets. That's nice and straight. That's nice and straight. Straight down the middle there. Oh yeah, that's nice. Tiny bit of relief there, tiny bit of fall away there. So the neck is uppity down at a, a little bit. Does happen. A bit, uh, it's a bit Loch Ness Monster's back shape, uppity down at a one way guitar. So I'm going to let that settle just for a few seconds. We'll see what this is saying now. Right, that relief is all but gone. Tiny bit of fall away, the last three, four frets. That doesn't bother me at all. I'm quite happy with that. So okay, let's go at it there. Let's grab a fret rocker and check the state of the frets. Because I'd imagine that these aren't level. On a guitar of this age. And it's been uh, subjected to, you can tell it's been subjected to some pretty not great conditions because of how dirty it is and how much crap is on the fingerboard there. But we're not going to worry about that. We've donned the gloves. So let's have a look at the frets and see where we are. Well that's not going to help. A little bit high on that side. But all in all, we don't seem too bad. I think with the right setup, I mean these frets are all warm, but all that one's a bit high. So we could two, eight. I'm not going to file them down, I'm going to knock them back in with ammo. Nine's high. Ten's high. Yeah, I'm not being paid to level the frets. Eleven's high. Twelve's high. So be. If it's someone playing regular. Fifteen, sixteen's high. I'd be saying you need a fret level on these. I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to knock them in the hour. Go as level as we can. That one's really high. Fret 19 there. That's as high as a kite. So we've got quite a few high frets, so what we're going to do is we're going to knock them back in with an hammer, with a mallet, a fretting mallet. Um, do I have one to hand? Yep. Let's do it live while we're here. So, okay, let's see where we are. Because this will probably sort of fix the problem. Just using it with the nylon end. There's no point chucking daft money at this. I'm paying for a fret level. That's done. Another one along 
ne onda. That's the one. So let's support it as much as we can. Check again. Over time, because the conditions are subjected to, frets can become unseated. I seem to have done the trick. That's not bad at all. Sometimes it doesn't work and we do have to take a file to them. That's not bad. That was really high. See if you're not going in a rug one normally it pops out. I just need to sort it out. Very good. These may pop again in the future. But at the moment, oh crikey mate, it's always the 14 one where it joins the body is normally the highest. That 14 fret is probably the reason to begin fret bus. It was quite high. 15 has got some height as well. See, look, because I'm not 15 in, 14 popped out again. It does happen. Okay, that's pretty good. And once we get up here, I'm not going to even worry about them because there's a little bit of natural fall away. So I'm going to let that be. I'm going to leave it be. That frets high. That doesn't matter. It's the next to last one. So we've got the frets level. That is a good thing. Now you see here, this well, that tuners that's popping out. I'm, about, I'm going to remove the tuners anyway and clean all this up. I would like to remove all this stuff she's glued on, but I ain't gonna because it's not in my price quotation. So I'm going to give it a clean. I'm not using any cleaning fluid, I'm using lemon oil. Lower oil, that'll do it. It's not going to harm anything. And it's going to need a lot. And I'm going to lemon oil the whole guitar, even the body and the bridge and whatever. And I'm going to let this soak in and I'm going to scrape it and then I'm going to oil the fingerboard again. A few scratches down here as well. So this has been knocked about. It's fell up, fallen over more than once or twice, I imagine. Obviously, it's starting to 
smell, I get the smell of what's under here. I'm not even going to try and describe what it smells like. Well, I don't know what it smells like. It's just not very nice. Certainly not pleasant. So I'm going to let that soak in for a little bit. Whew. It's not nice at all. Let's go the same with the body. Maybe if it doesn't come out, great. Leave it in. clean it on air as well because it's going to need it. Bird muck. So yeah. I'm going to reserve comment and reserve judgment. This is not as bad as I've had it. I've had some right horrible smeggy rubbish coming caked up all over the fingerboard and the future they're not going to get in the workshop. I say, no, no, I'm not touching that mate. Get all scraped off and cleaned up. And I'll look at it. So that will really clean the guitar up nicely. I've left this older cover on my mat specifically for this guitar because I knew I was going to have to squirt a lot of oil on it. So what we're going to go with, what we're going to go with, I'm thinking of an old tea towel here. It's just the perfect thing for wiping over these type of guitars. I love these tea towels. My miss is not keen. I buy little stacks of these things. I like traditional, I like little traditional stuff. She likes fancy tea towels, I say, ah, it's brilliant. If you don't want them, I'll have them in the workshop. That's where they are. So what's this? Magic. That's magic. Jeffy's new guitar. It smells nice as well for lemon oil. Which we know is mineral oil. Some lemon essence in there to make it smell nice. Mineral oil is a very broad term, it can mean anything. guitar back and you've cleaned it and they look at it it's like a new guitar and then it's like they've got a new guitar and it, and it makes whatever they've done it makes it worthwhile and it makes whatever price they charge worth it because again something might look totally different to when they bought it in this is going to be a 92 quid job 80 quid for the work unless I keep that knot on and 12 quid for strings but that body Looks fabulous now. Just, there you go. Look at that. Looks like a different guitar, doesn't it? And let the stuff on the neck, on the fingerboard, soak in for longer. Let's go onto the headstock now.
Jeg spiller under her. Oh, that must be glue. So if it's definitely spilt on here and stuck. Let's not to uh, hazard a guess as to where it might be. We're wearing the gloves, it's okay. Now these machine heads are very loose. So we're going to tighten those up in a minute. We're going to give them a clean as well. So the guitar is already looking a lot, lot better. I don't think she bought it again. She didn't bring it in the case. There's no case with it. my job to get it playing well. I know it's money well spent for her, isn't it? So let's make sure these are pressed well in because some of them popped out. She's pretty good now. Okay. Let's give her a flip and I want to grab something. So they are brass pins there. Just stick this little bit of uh, chamois leather, old chamois leather on there. So, okay, okay, let's see where we are with that. Okay, they don't look too bad. Now, do I have the right screwdriver? That is not the right one. I don't know what's happened. I do know what's happened. Bear with me. My rack of tools I put in, a fit this used to be a bedroom, we've got fitted wardrobes. It's in one of the fitted wardrobes. And I believe, there you go. I knew I'd seen it somewhere. Okay, let's see where we are. That's a lot better. I've got my piece of screwdrivers I've always used in the workshop. Finally. Turn these up. Very warm day. Now you notice I've got the blinds. Well, you won't notice I've got blinds down because you can't see. I saw the blinds down, otherwise, the sunlight, because we are south facing windows here. The sun shines straight through the window on the guitars, and you can't see the guitar for shine. So I have to have the blinds closed. So I've got blinds closed, windows open up here. It's warm. Not got my fan running yet. I will do. I've got a fan, a floor fan. It's it's mental. It's like a hovercraft fan, and it's too strong for this house. But it does its job, and I may. I need to get that out. Right, okay, let's just see if we can give this a clean. Put some oil on the back of a rack. Well, I'm going to spray a stupid amount of oil over there. Should probably do it. So already I've made the guitar look a lot lot better just by cleaning it. Which goes a long way. So let's flip it back. And get rid of that now. And the guitar looks a lot better.
that's uh, can get in the way. That's now out of the way. Right, they don't worry about that anymore. So what I'm going to do is put some more oil on here, just a little. Protect our work area. I'm going to be scraping this thing off. You see now I'll put this mat, this paper down over the mat, keeps the mat clean. And I'm going to keep buying new yoga mats at 15 quid a pop to use as a workbench or, or guitar support. Okay, so. We need something to scrape. Those frets, I've got just think, some old Stanley blades here. So you notice with the videos, I'm not stop starting. I'm straight on it and I'm working basically live. You're getting a live video. And the only thing we need doing live videos is to the music or uh, whatever I want to listen to on because the video, the videos would be blocked because of copyright laws. So I'm going to scrape the whole fingerboard and I'm going to stop the video in a minute because it's going to take a while. And that's what we're getting off there, look. Can you see that? And that's finger sweat and grime and whatever else I think I've been subjected to. And with that on there, it means the oil's not getting to the wood. Now it will do, you see. A look, so I'm going, to, I'm going to turn the camera off for a minute. We we'll get all that scraped off, get all that cleaned up, and uh, come back in a bit, show you the results. So the guitar now looks amazing, it looks a lot better than it did. Let's just move that camera around there. I'm going to work on the nut now because I bet the nut's not been polished for I don't know how long. But what we're going to do is I'm just going to go over it with some sandpaper just to take away all that tarnish and uh, discoloration. got plenty of material on the nut to work with. I'm going to reshape it. I was going to replace it with a bone nut, but I don't think I really need to do that. It's just going to add to the expense. And there's no point changing the nut if it doesn't need changing. I do have knocking about some compressor air, which I like to use. I can have used previously that one. And that's just for getting all the uh, dust out of the nut slots. Uh, someone hit these with Pencil, graphite, the looks of it. You don't need to do that on these knots, it's kind of self lubricated. But that has cleaned the knot up quite a lot. I could do with getting right in there. I'm going to need something. Let's try and fold it around that business card. And that should work better. So the business card being flexible. That looks, I mean, it doesn't look new, but it doesn't look bad, does it? You know what I mean? We'll do 
same again. And we're going to go in with the nut slot files, clean those slots up because we need to basically widen them slightly for a 1048 set of strings which I doubt I'm going to get out done tonight it's uh, 17 minutes past 7 my wife and I, it's Friday night, my wife and I are together from 7.30 onwards as we do every night so let's see where we are with these 10, 13, 17 I imagine the closer I've got to 48 is a 46 36, 28 I think it is going to work. 16, 13, 10. I'll check the gauges in a moment. What they really are. Take a 46. I could take a 50. In fact, I should take a 50. But we're just going to round off these slots. What we'll do is we will uh, we'll get some oil in there. I'd like these, yeah, that's, that's better. That was a lot better, that's wider than it needs to be, which is fabulous. And we'll lube this with a tiny bit of oil. But I'll be cutting these again when the strings are on. It's actually all wider than we need to be. I don't think that looks too bad. Take a little bit of oil, a little bit of a lot of oil, should I say. When you get there in the slots like so, we'll just let that find its level, seep in. <coughs> Come back with the compressed air. enough. So we are ready for restringing. I'm thinking with those frets knocked in, all I'm going to do is I need to polish the frets. I'm not doing that, have I? What about that? So I'll polish the frets next. Let me just grab some uh, steel wool. So I'll not be finishing this till tomorrow. I've got it, I've been out with the wife and the walk the dog around the uh, well, small lake, quite close to us, a part of the lake, or well, a, a large pond, definitely a large pond. And then we're going to walk around there. So, yeah, policy frets, so some super fine steel wool. Fret guard, fret board guard, should I say? Will that one fit in there? Yeah, that fit in nice. There we go. And that stops us getting into the board. Show you how it works. There you go, fret guard, 
and we're just it's a matter of and it's still warm, I'm polishing that for it. So I'm going to finish this, get the strings in, I'll clean the brass pins as well for the bridge. This has been dropped a few times as guitar because some of these frets have got scratches and dints in them. I wonder if it's buzzing. I'll clean up the brass pins for the bridge. I'm not going to alter the under saddle height if that saddle stuck in, so I'm not going to try and get it out. I'll leave it as is. And any action needs changing, I'll change it by altering the truss rod. Dinting these frets down here. But the guitar looks a lot better. Just need to clean the sides and the back. Get as low an action as I can. And I couldn't get it to buzz, so it's got to be the client's way, the way she plays, surely. But I'm sure she'll be happy with the results, where the guitar looks and the way it plays when she gets back. The great thing is you've got a natural curve down towards the sound over there, which is fantastic because it's giving us some fall away. It's a free fall away, it makes it easier to play anyway. So that's the first polished. That's not to be confused with the kind of fret polish you get when you have a refret. That's a totally different kettle of fish. But there you go. So we're ready for strings. a little bit of beautiful oil in the, I can see it in the fret slots which is brilliant, not the fret slots, the string slots in the knot. Like the files before I put them away. Not being put away, put away, they're just being put to the side. I'm going to obviously cut the depth of these slots a little bit more, but I may as well put them away for now. Keep your tools clean. Hick. Does that a fabulous dinner? Red Thai curry, chicken and prawn with the uh, with brown rice. Really, really nice. Very, very tasty. Me by the wife. Very good cook, my wife. Very, very good. Anyway, back to where we are. So look at these pins. Let's see if we can. I think we can make them look any better or worse. They're not in great condition, so we'll just leave them as is. We'll do them with white with a bit of chamois, chamois leather. And, uh, yeah, it's not going to make any difference to anything. But they are what they are. I don't want to alter anything on the saddle anyway. Oh yeah, we've got that out a lot. Now there is a shim under there. Is there a shim? Let's have a quick look because I think how thick is that? I don't think we need that shim. I'm gonna take that out. I don't think we need that, it's gonna lower the action by a very small amount. I don't think that's going to do anybody any harm. Now this 
saddle is a little bit worn. Just going to reuse it. I'll give it a little, sand it a little. Try and clean it up a bit. But we're not going to make much of a difference to that, so we'll, we'll just put that back in. It's got some deep grooves in. Maybe we could have replaced that. In an ideal world, I would have replaced that. I don't know if someone's going to be playing it professionally. And I'd definitely replace that. So we'll drop that just a little bit of height. So that's it, we're ready for strings. I'm going to check the time. It's 7.27. There's no point in carrying on. I'll get the strings on tomorrow. So once I've got the strings on tomorrow, I can clean the sides, clean the back. Get the strings on, stretch them in, we'll cut the nut and we'll have the guitar finished. So that's it for tonight folks. So nothing mega exciting happening with this guitar. I am going to put some strings on it right now. My strings of choice for the past six, seven years. Being these. Dragon Skin by DR, 1048. Extra light and they're becoming really difficult to get hold of. Uh, I used to get two sets for about 14 quid, two in a pack, you can't get the two packs anymore, so you had to buy, had to buy it at £12 a set at the moment. That's my last set there, I thought I'd have more. So I've gone and bought myself another set, and this could go on the client guitar. So, pins. Decided not to replace a knot, didn't really think it needed a replacer. Couldn't see the point of replacing it, just for the sake of it. But it's so hot today. I've been out dumb around this morning, warm now. Really, really warm. Take it here. What you can hear is my fan whirring away. Hmm. Just decided to uh, up, up rather than that over. And down, there you go. There you go. Let's get the wines right. So you can see scra deep scratches and wear in the fingerboard. I've leveled. I've not sort of level professors, not to level. So the fresh as level as it's going to be. And if a lady still thinks she's getting string buzz after I've set it up, then uh, she's mistaken. I couldn't get the thing to buzz at all. It must be the way she's playing it. I do know she's a, she's a bit arthritic. So it may be difficult for her to play. Nice guitar seats on Tangle Woods. Nice tone. Again, that one's come over the top. I didn't want it there. I should start doing the top one at the top, I think. There we go, that'll get us there. That'll get us there, look.
Oh, this appears to be missing top string. So I'm going to get one out of my. Uh, I'll just get one out of another set. I didn't know that. Oh, well, I'm missing the top string. Strange. Uh, never mind. We'll just put a regular top string. I always carry spares. Oh dear, dear, we have spares, so we'll be okay. Oh, what a scorcher of a day, seriously. We are, what's the date today? 12th of June. Year of our Lord 2023. What a glorious day, what a fantastic weekend. Nine on, couldn't I? Because she doesn't want to have a string, this woman. I stuck a set of nines on there. Uh, I put a nine on there on the top rather than a ten. Let's see what we've got. Somewhere. Here, there he goes. Eleven fifty twos. I don't know what I've done with him, mind you. There you go. Here, there he goes. Got some nines and cent tens on him. Put here, there he goes. Nine on there. Brand new one. and call themselves all of them. What's that? Like that? I don't know why that'd be missing a string, that pack. Okay, nine, nine. Some GHS nines in there as well. I'm not short of spare strings. Like I say, I'm not going to be stop starting the video anymore. I'm just going to let it run. I've not got time for two videos. Because my YouTube channel doesn't make any money anymore. Because nobody, if you don't get likes, clicks, and whatever you. Your videos don't get promoted, don't get promoted, you don't get paid. I just get paid nearly 200 pound a month now. Again, about 60 quid every two months. So uh, if you're not clicking my videos, I'm not gonna be too worried about making them. So there it is.
So if we get this played nice, the lady will be happy to get it back. I'm sure we'll get played nice, no problem. It may have benefited from the fret level, but... Or silly money. There is something so old or something she can hardly play. A little bit, a little bit loose, but I'm sure we'll be able to tighten the strings up. I have tried a little to knock about, knock it about somewhere. I know, oh, there we go, right here. See so if we get this to pick everything up.
So that's the strings on tune to pitch. I'm going to stretch the strings in a little bit. And once that's done, I'm going to come back and show you how to cut these nut slots. These nut slots are quite high, so we are going to lower those quite considerably. So back soon. Okay, so strings are on, we stretched in, and we're going to cut the nut slots. Now, I don't have to go as low as I do on electric and cutting the nut slots, especially on this lady who's playing this. She's, I mean, she's not old, she's older than me, so, and I'm 57, so she's older than me, but she's not old, old. But she's had trouble with her wrist, she's a, bit, a little bit arthritic, I think, so I'm going to drop these strings lower, make it easy to play. This is an extra light set of strings by DR. Dragon skin, the last set. And that 0 0.3, I'm going to go this side. 0 0.3, 0 0.28, 0 0.26, 0 0.24, 0 0.22, 0 0.2. So gradually going down a little. So we're going to take the right size or as close as we can to the right size file. It's a 48 string, it's a 0 0.046. And these are my Hosco set of uh, not slot files, and they cut a perfect U shape or semicircle shape. So we're just going to do a little measure. So I'm just going to remove. I feel like we can move a bit from there. So we're going to go in. And this is going to make the guitar easier to play. So I cut straight and just angle slightly, just like a little bit of extra width, it's a 48 string. So let's see where we are. And you only want to cut a little bit, you only go too deep, I was good, but well, already looks good. Take a little bit more than that off there. I think that's getting us in the ballpark, yeah, that was pretty good. to where it needs to be so we're going to hit that with 36 because that's the closest I've got to a 38 file cleaned and away right on 36 So a little bit lower on this one. with that. Next one goes to about 26 so I'll get a 25 gauge. 0 0.025 or well, a quarter of a millimetre. in there. And we do have a 28 file, so that's going to be the right one. 28, again. I 
shot's looking pretty good. Very nice, we're nice and low there. Same again with this one, around about the same height. That's actually pretty close to being there, so don't just take a lot of material out of that one. Okay, we can go down a little with that one. I can't say too low because it's not buzzing. Perfect. Ah, that's a little bit low. And the last two. Don't need too much. Just take these down a little. That's it. I'm happy with where those slots are. We're all nice and low, so you don't need a lot of pressure now to play a chord or note a string. Just going to check the amount of relief in the neck. Get those out of the way, ready to pull away. certainly got more relief in there than I would like so we're going to tighten the truss rod I think we get to four mil and the keys are out Just grab a four and we're going to tighten that truss rod Regarding the truss rod, 
Oh, that's not bad. The top I look in. So I'm going to look for a 0.25, around about 5th, 6th, 7th fret. Say the 6th. About 0.25 will be lovely. And we are just there. So that's fabulous. So that is now set up. So we're just going to check the two mini again. We'll just stretch some strings in a little more. But there we're going to alter the camera angle and we can tie this video up. And here we are all done. And I'm going to try and remember what I've done to this guitar. I came in, she said it was buzzing on the E string. I couldn't find a buzz. I said to her, I can't hear it buzzing. But uh, I'll have it for you. And uh, it, more than anything, it needed a good setup and a good clean. Uh, and it's had all of that and more. Um, I've removed the shim from under the bridge because that made the bridge too high. I've reset the neck, not reset as in take it off and glued it back in. I'm going to reset that in as much as I've altered the amount of relief in the neck. Uh, I'll give them the frets a good whack with a hammer to get them all level because there are six, seven or eight of them were not level. It could really do me a fret level. Um, but I decided just to hammer them in so it's not charging her any extra money. I've recut the nut slots and polish the frets, clean the finger. The fingerboard was disgusting. Clean the fingerboard, giving it a scrape and giving it a clean and an oil treatment. Clean the whole guitar. I uh, just need to wipe, I mean the pack doesn't look that bad does it, but look at it, it looks a lot better than when it came in, look at that. And, it looks apart and it sounds rather nice. So let's have a little quick tinkle. Sound good these old tango woods. So that's it, all done. Let me remind you of my number. It is a TW115ST. Don't know what the ST stands for, could be spruce. Uh, don't know what the T stands for. TW with Tango Wood 115. It's got a serial number, it doesn't say where it's made, probably Korea designed in the United Kingdom but that one is all done. I'm sure the owner will enjoy it when she gets it back, let's hope so eh? But look at it, it looks like a new guitar compared to when it, compared to when it came in but that's it for this one. I'm going to move on to the next one. I'm going to turn my fan off, change the cover on this mat, and get the next guitar on the bench and I'll be back in a few minutes with a new project. Uh, so before I go just remind you of my website, best place facebook.com forward slash N G O N E S E V N. That's facebook.com forward slash N G one seven. I am Victor. I am your fret friend. Until the next time, as always, God bless you. Be good to each other, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>